students so before starting with today's class i'll just quickly give you some instructions on how you have to do your activity 1 which will be uploaded tomorrow on the school website all right so just how you've done it in the previous session you have to do the work activity work on your uh, apo size sheets all right you can use blank uh, plain sheets apo size or you can use a uh, use a pattern rule sheet it is up to you then on the first sheet mention your details that is you will write activity 1 and then these details that is name class section and subject all right activity 1 then name class section and subject this you have to write all these details and activity 1 on the top clear then you have to put the sheet then you have to take new sheet then you will copy down the first question you have to write the questions along with the answers all right copy down the question now for example in the first question you have been asked five generations of computers along with the technology example and two key features of each generation there are five generations of each generation you have to mention these three details all right so as ma'am has taught you in a tab uh, in a table form isn't it so either you can make a table or like say for example first generation you will write then technology example two key features then second generation technology example and two key features or you can do it like this you can uh, put first generation here all right just how activity 1 is written that, that was first generation and then technology then you will write the technology then example and two key features so it is up to you you can either make a table or you can put it in categories all right just make sure that you write of each generation there are five generations of each you have to write these three things clear then on the next sheet on the new page you will do the next question clear this is how you have to complete your work once you have done your work then you have to take this sheet where you have given your details you have to put it on top and take together all the sheets you can use as many sheets as you want all right to complete your work make sure your work is neat and proper work all right i repeat again very neat and tidy work clear and properly done and then once you have done your work take together all the sheets and staple it at the corners all right with this detail sheet on the top so this is how you have to do your activity one clear now let's begin with today's class now in the previous class you have studied about measuring memory and ipo cycle ma'am had shown you a flow chart in the previous video and uh, uh she has explained to uh, you the ipo cycle let's just quickly revise so a computer works on the principle of ipo that is input process output the cycle followed by a computer of taking input processing it and giving the output is known as input process output input here is the data and instructions which a computer gets through the input devices is called input process the entered data is processed or changed into meaningful information by cpu that is central processing unit output is the result of processing or and and the output is displayed through the output devices all right so how does it work it works on the basis of the input that is the instructions that we give to the computer and how do we give that through input devices like keyboard mouse etc then the computer processes it with the help of cpu the cpu processes that information and what we get back what the computer gives us back is the result or the output and which is displayed through the output devices like monitor or printer etc all right now starting with today's topic that is computer memory so we will be studying about the 
types of computer memory so there are two types of computer memory first primary memory and second is secondary memory now let's understand what is computer memory a computer memory is used for storing data and instructions now we all know that a computer can store a lot of data and it works on the instructions given by us because it is a machine so it does what we want it to do it does not operate on its own all right then a computer can only understand the binary language that means it does not understand a human language it understands the machine language and a computer can only understand binary language in which zero uh, zeros and ones that is on and off so on is represented by one and off is represented by zero all right so the data is stored in the computer memory in the form of bits or binary digits the capacity of computer memory can also be expressed in terms of bytes in the previous class you have studied all this in detail all right so uh, you have studied about the kilobytes the gigabytes isn't it the terabyte so this is the same thing just revision now starting with today's topic now here is a flow chart showing you the types of memories so it is of two types main first is primary memory and the second is secondary memory now here primary memory is the computer's memory or the memory on which computer works and the secondary memory is the user's memory say for example our memory how we can save data let's understand it better now the primary memory can further be classified into two types that is ram and rom ram is random access memory and rom is read only memory now secondary memory the user's memory we can how can we store data through the secondary storage devices like hard disk cd dvd blu-ray disk pen drive and memory card all right let's study this in detail let's just revise them so the primary memory now what is a primary memory primary memory is the main memory or the internal memory so a computer cannot run without the primary memory as i just told you a computer works on these two that is ram and rom this is the computer's memory so it is also the main memory and uh, where are these ram and rom chips uh, present it is in the motherboard inside the cpu all right so these uh, the primary memory holds only those data and instructions on which the computer is currently working this is one thing one feature and the data on the primary memory is directly available to the cpu so it reads the instructions continuously and executes them as required and then the primary memory is divided into two types that is ram and rom now what is the difference between ram and rom in the picture the first one the green uh, and with the chips this is the ram and the one with those spikes or those pointed things a uh, pointed thing on it is the rom all right so this is how they look like the chips the ram chips and the rom now what is the difference with uh, what are the differences between them so the a ram as i already told you ram is random access memory it is the read and write memory all right so the information can be written on to it and read from ram and rom is read only memory so that means that data is pre recorded which can only be read we cannot modify the rom it is permanent data so we can only read it and rom uh, and the ram is on what we are working currently 
and we can modify the that information all right then the ram holds the instructions and data on which you are working currently as i already explained it to you say for example now when a computer starts it loads the operating system into ram all right and when you are working on any program you are actually working on the program loaded on the ram or in the ram and ram is also volatile memory that means that it retains the store information as long as the power is on as soon as the light goes off or the electricity goes off the whatever you were working on goes off as well to its back to its place say for example uh, i'm working on a word document then i have typed one paragraph and suddenly the light goes off or the electricity goes off computer is off then when i will switch it back again when the light comes so whatever i was working on will not be saved and those programs will be closed all right so for that what we do now this is just additional information nothing related to that so while we are working say for example on anything uh, here as i gave you the example of word document so how do we save that the first time we save it is as save as all right so that is why we keep saving the data as so for example i typed one then i have saved that document then i have again opened it i have typed another paragraph then another paragraph then i feel that the light can go any time so i will just keep saving that data and that will be saved in the file in the hard disk all right hdd we will study it now uh, in the uh, coming uh, slide so this is how it works whatever we are working currently on something is we are working on the ram all right we can modify it but rom is non volatile memory ram is volatile and rom is non volatile memory as as it retains the contents even when the power is switched off that means it is permanent it is fixed we cannot change rom all right it is already pre recorded or fixed data fixed uh, memory then ram the uh, now you must have heard if a computer is slow or work slow hangs a lot then what do we do we increase the ram of a computer to make it run faster all right so the amount of ram installed in a computer affects the number and size of programs that a system can run at the same time all right so that is why ram the higher the ram the faster the computer and the processing of the computer applications so everything becomes quick when you have a lot of space there all right and then a rom is a is used for storing a special software where basic input or output system bios all right so this software helps to load the operating system when the computer is switched on so these were a few points how ram and rom differ then moving on to the next one that is secondary memory now what is secondary mem memory it is also the external or the backup memory and as i told you the user's memory also known as the external memory or the backup memory all right now where do we keep backup of our data through these devices the, through these secondary storage devices isn't it we can store lots of data permanently on these devices so let's see what uh, they are now hard disk first is say, okay say for example the first one is sd card as you can see in the picture now what is this sd card this is also known as a memory card okay and where do we see this we see it uh, these days typically in mobile phones and where else and why is it used it is a, uh, it is very small in size and is used to store data in devices like 
mobile phones, digital cameras, MP3 players, and many more portable devices. All right. So this is used to store our data in phones or cameras. All right. So this is a safe example in mobile phone. There is internal memory and there is external memory. So that external memory is the is, is this SD card or the memory card. It, we can even take this chip out and we can put it uh, in card readers and we can see the data inside it. It stores all the information whatever you want to store inside it. Then comes HDD that is hard disk drive. Now it is the main secondary storage device and where is it? It is inside a computer found inside a computer and where is it present it is inside the CPU box alright now it can store a large amount of data whatever uh, info data is there is inside this HDD in computer and where is this disk as you can see there is one disk present there isn't it so this is inside the CPU box so all the work done on a computer can be stored on a hard disk but these days there is another upgraded version that has come that is SSD what is that in uh, what is it it is solid state drive now it is much faster than HDD all right now why because this here in this HDD there is a disk which makes it slow as compared to SDD this is slower and it heats up fast and SD uh, and that solid state drive is faster because it has chips inside it all right so there is nothing uh, this moving thing which makes it slow so it is faster all right as compared to HDD then we come to another device that is pen drive now this is the most popular thing right now isn't it you must be using it very frequently now a pen drive is also a storage device and it is small in size it is portable we can carry it from one place to another then a pen drive can be used to store and transfer data from one computer to another and where do we connect it we connect it to USB port alright and USB uh, the full form of USB is universal serial bus port of a computer all right you must be aware now what a pen drive is so then we come to CDs now there are these three types of CDs if you can see in that picture now the main uh, the main feature how they differ say for example they differ in their capacity to hold or to store data now let's uh, just take one by one so that it is clear to you uh, say for example the first one CD what is the full form of CD it is compact disc they are circular in shape three of them are circular that is round circular in shape and can store lots of data then a CD can be carried from one place to another and most of the programs and games that you use on your computer are available as CDs isn't it now if you want a game then uh, how do you get it from a shop it is in the form of a or it is stored in a CD alright then CDs are of two types CDR that is recordable CD where uh, we cannot uh, uh, erase or the data once recorded cannot be removed and then there is another type of CD that is CDRW that is rewritable CD so we can erase the data and we can put new data inside that all right then comes DVD now the full form of DVD is digital versatile disc it also looks like a CD but it has it is more capable of storing data all right we can store many movies inside a dvd then comes blu-ray disc now this name is de derived from blue violet laser all right and how does it differ from cd and dvd 
the blu-ray disc has the maximum capacity out of the three to store data all right it has the highest capacity it has uh, five times more storage capacity than a dvd all right so all the um, high quality video files and games are which require more storage space are stored in this blu-ray discs all right so this is it with the, the secondary memory now we've studied the main difference primary memory is of two types which is of computer which is used by computer and the secondary memory has these devices the user's uh, memory how we can store information all right now there are a few notes for you of what we've studied today so you can just copy them down in a rough copy because it will be helpful to you in making the activity all right so this is it with today's topic now the notes will be played for you and you can pause and write them down in a rough copy all right thank you